We're going to take a reading from Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts fell in them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. These verses speak to me clearly about the tribulation that is upon the earth right now. Anybody that thinks that tribulation is not here, I can honestly say you're not exercised to discern between good and evil who have not studied the word of God properly and not read the Bible right through and understand what the Holy Spirit is saying in these days. You can come up with all the end time, different people come up with all the end, different end time reasonings and theologies and eschatologies and everything else. But we want to hear, I'm not interested in what views people have, I'm interested in what the Bible is saying. And the Bible is clearly saying we're in the days of tribulation. Now, I have, got, I have made videos and the sequence of end time events. You'd have to look at those videos, but today I'm not going to sequence this. I just want to tell you what is happening. And what is happening now, we have tribulation. And uh, I said over a number of years that it has begun, but it is increasing as the days go by. And as you turn your TV set on, you listen to the radio, you look on the internet and so on, you hear the news around you, you don't see much good news. They try to, yes, um, throw in a bit of good news every now and then about the royal wedding or something like that. Somebody's rescued a cat from a tree or something like that. But at the end of the day, all we see is more trouble. We see the economic situation, not only in this country, throughout the world, America is in America massive debt of billions, how possibly they're going to bail themselves out, the dollar losing its value and um, the world leaders and those involved in the economies of this world, running of the economies of this world, thinking of a new mon uh, 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 monetary system and a new currency other than the dollar. Yes, it will be transferred over, I've spoken about this before. And so we see this going on, we see nation fighting against nation, we see civil unrest, and wars going on throughout the world and then we have the religious wars as, as well. There's so many things going on and we surely are in the days of tribulation. But um, it shouldn't surprise us as Christians and I, I think a lot of Christians are just brushing it under the mat and they're more interested in feeling good, everybody's saying what they want here and they want their ears tickling. Just say the right things, don't speak about trouble, don't speak about tribulation, don't speak about the Antichrist, because I don't want to hear about it. it. It makes me worry about myself, my children, my future, my pension and everything else. But look, Jesus never pulled punches. He was straight down the line. When he spoke to people about what was going to happen, he didn't cover it over, he told the truth. When he spoke about heaven and hell, he, so, he talked about the blessings of heaven and the consequences of hell. He didn't butter up his words. The truth is the truth and it's called the naked truth of God's word and it's speaking to us today. And it's there in the Bible for us all to see. Why can't people see it? Do, why do we always um, relegate it to some other time? When it's there in the scriptures, it says here there will be signs in the sun. It speaks about signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Nations in distress. With perplexity, people's hearts perplexed of what's happening on the earth. What is going on? The nuclear threat, pollution threat, the food chain threat, a new E. coli outbreak. Now it's in the food chain. What's going to be next? Will it be the water, polluted waters? You read the book of Revelation, it speaks about all these things, about polluted waters, people dying because of pollution and so on. Famines, distress of nations. Men's hearts fell in them for fear. And that's what's happening. The suicide rate is going up. Men's hearts fell in them from fear and the expectation of those who are coming on the earth are saying, I, I, I've had enough trouble. It seems to increase day after day and they're just collapsing within. 
the minds are collapsing, the bodies are collapsing, and the only way out is suicide or to do something stupid. These are the signs of the second coming of Jesus. We're talking now about the birth pains as the woman in travail with child is increasing the pains till she's brought forth that newborn child. Jesus is coming back. It's all leading up to the second coming of Christ when he, when he will usher in his new world order and his millennial reign. When there will be peace. Uh, when there will be blessing like that baby when it's born. There is such peace after all the tribulation that the lady that's having the baby has gone through. And now there's peace, there's blessing, there's joy and happiness uh, that a newborn baby is born into this world. And Jesus is bringing to birth a new world order. But before that happens, the Antichrist, and it's near, and you, read, uh, you can look at my videos on the Antichrist, I've done quite a number of them, and even speaking about who the Antichrist is, will soon appear on the world stage because out of the desperate need of the nations for uh, economic stability, and uh, for stability in the nations, they will be looking for somebody who can bring it all about and bring peace back and have a, a plan that will uh, it, it help them create this man's new world order. But it will fail. An antichrist will come. And those that are alive today, myself and others included, God willing, if we're not taken before them, will see the antichrist, will experience greater tribulation, will experience the persecution against the saints of God. We will see that the financial situation be used to oppress the saints of God. And they'll be clamping down on them. Jesus is the only way uh, to be saved. And he will introduce what he's already doing now, his multi-faith movement. And that anybody who doesn't fall in line with that and says, no, ours is the only way, like we do as born-again Christians. Because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father, mate. He is the only way. And those will be uh, ostracised, excluded, will be outlawed and will be persecuted in these end times. And the, the system is already set in order for the Antichrist to take over. But these things must happen because Jesus said it's got to happen. You read about it in the book of Daniel, the book of Zechariah, the book of Revelation and many prophecies in the Bible. And throughout the Bible it speaks about these end time days when there will be tribulation. And for those who, those of you who have this ridiculous end time eschatology view, uh, is it amillennialism? Where you think that the actual uh, millennium is here and now. This is not the millennium. Quite clearly, it's tribulation. And uh, we've got, we've become inoculated with murders every day. We've got used to it. Oh, another 10 murders today. Another rape today. Another 20 rapes today. At one time when I was younger, a murder was kind of a, not rare, but it wasn't like it is now, epidemic. And it's the same with the plagues, you see, with this E. coli, and new strains of it. And I, the first thought that came to me was plagues. And the Bible speaks about end time plagues. Read about it in the book of Revelation, that demon powers would be let loose upon the face of the earth. Plagues would come, wars, famines, distress of nations, all bad news. But to the, for the Christian, and this is why I can't understand why so many Christians are brushing all this truth under the mat. When this should be good news for those who are right and walking in the spirit of the Lord, they should be rejoicing. Because it says, you know, your redemption is drawing nigh. What are we talking about? We're talking about the rapture, the second coming of Jesus, which is in two stages. First for his saints, then with his saints. And and it will be the redemption, the rapture of the saints, where we'll be changed in the twinkle of an eye to be with Jesus for eternity, and then we'll return with Him to the earth. We should be excited, but instead of living in the blessed hope, we're living in the doomed hope because we're just brushing everything. We don't want to face it. We have to face the truth. God didn't give you a, a Bible to for you to take out the pe the parts that you like and exclude the rest. He gave you the full counsel of God. And we need to read it all, otherwise we will not be prepared for what is coming. Now many years ago God spoke to me and he said, your endurance will be tested. I didn't realise at that time as a young Christian how many years that would be tested up to this present day. But it's all for, for the preparation of the 
that evil day which has come upon the world of the, the, the day of trial. The end time trial will come upon the face of the earth and the trial has come and it will increase. So we need to get close to Jesus now. We need to listen to what he's saying and be prepared for what is coming because it will come. And then when it, man has, has reached his peak in his rebellion against God, then God will come back, judge the earth and bring Usher in his new millennial reign. So we look forward to those things and the Bible says he who overcomes, it keeps repeating, he who overcomes, he who overcomes. And the Christian life today is about overcoming and uh, rejoicing in the fact that he's coming back soon. So thank you for listening today.